Hi, my name is Matt Nightingale. I'm a senior specialist solutions architect at AWS, focusing on generative AI training and inference. In this video, I will walk through the steps for creating a hyperpod cluster on Amazon SageMaker. Before I do so, let's walk through what's involved in the process. When creating a SageMaker hyperpod cluster, you need to define the resources within your account which you wish to integrate with SageMaker hyperpod. For the sake of today's demo, we provide a SageMaker VPC CloudFormation template which sets up the necessary networking and storage infrastructure to deploy a SageMaker Hyperpod cluster. This template is also open sourced on our GitHub repository, which will be linked below. The SageMaker VPC template contains both a public and a private subnet, along with an internet gateway and NAT gateways for managing internet access. The template also includes security groups configured for Amazon Elastic Fabric Adapter, or EFA, communication. Additionally, it provisions an Amazon FSx for Lustre file system, which gives high performance storage and optionally provides the availability to create S3 endpoints and an S3 bucket, which will contain the lifecycle scripts used to deploy the cluster, along with an IAM cluster execution role, which will give the SageMaker cluster instances permissions to access AWS resources. Here I define the parameters for my SageMaker Hyperpod template. Here I will enter the availability zone configuration for the subnets. This is the availability zone which contains the capacity used to create the cluster. Additionally, I will also define parameters for my Amazon FSx for Lustre file system. Here I'm defining a 1.2 tebabit file system, as well as creating an, an S3 endpoint. Finally, I'll leave the rest as defaults, including the Lustre version and compression for the file system, and go ahead and create the stack. While this stack is spinning up, let's take some time to understand what else is required to create a SageMaker Hyperpod cluster. With the SageMaker VPC stack deploying, let's take a moment to understand SageMaker Hyperpod's lifecycle scripts. Lifecycle scripts are a set of customizable base scripts which Hyperpod uses to bootstrap your cluster nodes when they are created. Lifecycle scripts can be used for things like pre-installing particular packages, defining user access permissions, configuring cluster monitoring, and mounting shared storage to your cluster. We publish a base set of lifecycle scripts that follows our recommended best practices to bootstrap your cluster. These best practices include things like mounting an Amazon FSx for Lustre file system, creating POSIX users, configuring home directories on the nodes to map to the shared file system, configuring Slurm accounting, optionally configuring user access through LDAP server, setting up Prometheus for observability, and finally installing Docker and root and pixies. When your cluster is created, these set of lifecycle scripts that you define run on each cluster node at creation point. SageMaker Hyperpod will also run these scripts anytime a replacement action is, is made within your cluster. This includes a Hyperpod auto resume or manual replace action. We publish our base set of lifecycle scripts to our GitHub Awesome Distributed Training Repository. We recommend users clone these base lifecycle strips, scripts and use or modify them when creating their SageMaker Hyperpod cluster. We will do that today. You can view the onCreate.sh script here, which is the entry point for all of your SageMaker Hyperpod uh, cluster lifecycle scripts. In the script here, we define a log file, which will get output to CloudFormation for the cluster provisioning as well as the resource configuration path that gets installed on our SageMaker cluster nodes. The lifecycle script.py file is where we define the lifecycle scripts that will be called on each cluster node. Here we can see the, U the files within our utils folder that, were, that will execute the specific actions on node creation, such as mounting FSx to the Ubuntu home directory, installing Docker, and installing Enroot and Pixies. So now that we've taken a look at the lifecycle scripts, let's understand what, it, what is configured within a cluster configuration file. The cluster configuration.json file is where you define your SageMaker Hyperpod parameters, including your cluster name, your controller node, the instance type of your controller node, as well as your worker groups and the instance types and instance counts of the nodes within your worker groups. In this example, we have a worker group set to MLP548X large, with instance count equal to 32. The source S3 URI defined in the cluster configuration file includes the path to the S3 bucket which contains our lifecycle scripts. Finally, with the cluster configuration file created, 
we execute the AWS SageMaker create cluster API and pass in this cluster configuration.json file. After about 15 to 20 minutes, when the cluster creates, we'll SSH in to the cluster via Amazon SSM or Systems Manager Session Manager. With the SageMaker Hyperpod stack deployed, now we can go ahead and create our cluster. To create the cluster, for today's demo, we're going to be using our easysetup.sh script, which is published to our awesome distributed training repository. This script will read the CloudFormation stack parameters that were created in the previous step and use those parameters to populate our cluster configuration and call the Amazon SageMaker Create Cluster API. Let's see that in action. So first I'm going to curl this script to receive it from GitHub. Now that I have the easy setup.sh script in my repository, I am going to call it and pass in the cluster name. Let me head to my handy dandy cheat sheet here. I'm going to pass in the region, which is AP Southeast 2 in this case, the instance type, P548X large, as well as the instance count, which is 4. I will also pass in the cluster name, ML Cluster Demo. Let's execute this script, and we'll see the output beginning to be populated. Here the script is reading my CloudFormation stack for the resources that were created, including the subnets and the FSX for Luster. It's gathering those and uploading the lifecycle scripts to S3. Finally, it's validating the configuration and creating my cluster. As an output of the script, I have a cluster ARN. I'll be able to go to the Amazon SageMaker console to view my cluster being created now. So now I can navigate to the SageMaker Hyperpod console and view my cluster. I can see the cluster is now in service. Uh, it's changed from status creating to in service and the instance nodes are also running. This cluster consists of a single controller node, an M5 12x large, as well as four compute nodes, which are P5 48x large. The SageMaker Hyperpod console also tells me the S3 lifecycle path that was used for the lifecycle scripts when creating this cluster, as well as the cluster execution role. Additionally, I can see the security group and VPC subnets that were configured for the SageMaker Hyperpod cluster. Now that the cluster is in service, let's go ahead and connect to the controller node. To do so, we will use our easy ssh.sh script, which is included in our GitHub repository. So I'm going to curl this script, which will take in cluster name as a parameter and use Amazon Systems Manager Session Manager on the back end to create a session with the controller node of our SageMaker Hyperpod cluster. Let me clear my screen and I'm going to curl that script from GitHub. Awesome. Now that I have the easy SSH script, I'm going to use it to connect to my cluster by passing the cluster name MLP5 cluster. Oh, let me change permissions on that script. I will pass my cluster name. Now on the back end, the script is using Systems Manager Session Manager to allow me to connect to the cluster. Here I can log in as a Ubuntu user by default. If there were multiple users on this cluster, I might log in as my own individual POSIX user. And now that I'm on the cluster head node, I'll run sinfo, which will show me the slurm state of the state of the slurm nodes within the cluster. sinfo is reported by the slurm controller daemon, which is running on the controller node. Here I can see that I have four P5 nodes in my cluster. The part, they all exist within both the dev, which is the default, and the P5-48x large partition, which was created by Hyperpod when I, when I built my cluster. I also have the IP addresses of all the cluster nodes. Now, before I SSH into one of these cluster nodes, let me run uh, df-h. Here we can see that the shared FSX for Luster file system which is created as 1.2 tepabytes, is mounted onto the controller node at mount point slash fsx. 
If I run pwd, I also see that my home directory is mounted at f uh, fsx slash ubuntu. Um, this was configured by the lifecycle script that will mount the home directory for each user, in this case Ubuntu user, to the shared file system. Now, if I try to SSH into one of these nodes at cluster creation, I will get a permission denied. That's because I haven't created a public key yet. So now, as a next step, I'll create a public key. We have instructions on doing so in our workshop. Uh, I've also got a handy helper script here, which I will pull up. So to create the uh, public key and mount that to the FSX file system, I'm going to cd into the SSH directory and generate a new public key. I'm then going to write that key to the authorized key file. This will share that, that SSH key on the FSX file system, which is mounted on all the cluster nodes. Now that I've done this, I can cd back to my user directory and SSH to one of the cluster nodes, and I should be prompted to confirm. Great. So now that I've SSH from the controller node, the M512X large, to the cluster node, the compute node, the P548X large, I can run NVIDIA SMI and see that there's eight H100 GPUs. I can also run df minus h as a sanity check and see that we have our FSX for Lustre shared file system mounted to the compute node as well. And the P5 node also contains uh, NVMe storage, about 27 terabytes available NVMe storage per P5 node. From here, I will exit and go back to the controller node. Now that we've gotten comfortable with operating uh, a SageMaker Hyperpod cluster at a very high level. In the next video, we'll dive into launching distributed training jobs on SageMaker Hyperpod. Hope you'll join us. Thanks.